So what I want to do first of all is save our inventory itself, just the list of items that we have there. And the way we're going to go about doing all of this is with a few simple events so we don't have to hook directly into everything that's being saved. What I want to do is I want to have a save event that gets fired off whenever a whatever action would invoke saving in our game. And then anything that needs to save something can subscribe to that event and then save what it has to save whenever that event fires off. Pretty simple to do. And I have a class here with some events. These are just actions. Actions are just uh, single events. They're just single delegate, single uh, parameter events that make it very easy for us to do simple stuff like this. So all I'm going to do is just do what I've already done here. In fact, I already have these listed here. But what I'm going to do is create a system dot action. You could use that namespace if you wanted to up here. And I'm just going to call it save initiated. And what I'm going to do is create the handler for this public static void on save initiated. Now this doesn't take in any parameters. If it did, I would just pass them in through here, just like this, whatever they may be. But it doesn't have to, it just, it doesn't care about anything other than, oh, I'm trying to save. So anything it wants to save, now is your chance to save. So on save initiated, all I have to do is invoke this action and then anything listening to it will understand. So I'm going to say save initiated. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the null conditional operator that you see right here, the question mark and the period. And what that's going to do is if save initiated was null, which means it had no subscribers, normally you would check for it like, you know, if save initiated is not equal to null, right? That's how you would normally check for that. But we can use a simple operator here that would check for it for us beforehand. And if it is null, instead of throwing an exception, it will just null the entire thing. The result will be null, the return will be null, instead of getting a reference exception like you normally would. So simply invoke this, just like that. And now anything it wants to be saved whenever I save uh, by firing off the event, will subscribe to this. So in our inventory, I will take and I'll go through game events dot save initiated, add to that whatever I want to listen to that. And I'm going to create a simple save method here. And I'm going to make that a listener for that event. And now in save, all I have to do is go through what do I, what do I call it? Save load dot save. And I want to pass in the type of object I want to save. I'm going to save a list of item. That's what my inventory is, a list of item. And I pass that in as the type I'm saving. And then I just pass in the object itself and the name I want to give that save. So the object itself is items and the name I want to give the save. I'll just call it inventory. Just like that. And now whenever save initiated is invoked, this will happen. And you'll notice here, this is redundant. Now I like to define it anyway, but it's redundant because it can infer from the object I'm passing in on the type of object it's working with, because it is also a generic. The first parameter is a generic, so it makes it very simple for it. But I do like to have it explicitly defined just for my sake. So now with that, what I wanna do is I have game here, and I just wanna create a public void method that I can hook up my save button to. So I can click a button and this is gonna be responsible for firing off the event in my game events. So anything that wants to be saved will know when I click the button, oh, the event's fired off, everything can save. So I'll go through game events and now to fire off this event, all I have to do is call on save initiated, just like that. So now back in Unity, canvas save load, let's double click on that and center and frame. Select save, and it's already hooked up, but I would go add that event. Let's just remove it here. I would add the event, find my object that has the game class on it, and then go to save just like that. Now, just to make sure that this is all being hooked up right, let's go to save load here. And whenever I save, I just wanna log that out that I saved. Let's collect these items again here. Save, 
and it says saved. Okay, so it said saving. Let's see where it's saving to. If I go to file, build settings, and I go over to my player settings here, what I wanna look at is default company. I will call this game grind, and I will call this save load lesson. And now if I were to create that save file again, we should be able to find it in the game grind folder. Let's do this, let's grab all these items here. Save. Now I'll come out and I'll say app data with the percentage signs around it to get us directly to this folder. Go back out to app data, local low, game grind, save load lesson, saves, inventory. So there's the file we just created. Open this up and this is what you see. Now you can see obviously the strings are practically intact. And then we have some assembly information, but all that stuff's great. So we've saved our inventory. So now all I have to do is to load that inventory. Void load. Then we want to check to see, first of all, does it, a save file exist for the inventory? So we're going to use the save data, save load.save exists for the key of inventory. See how easy that is? If it does exist, then we're going to load it in. So what I want to do is use that add items method. I knew it was there for a reason. And I want to pass in a collection of items I want to add to the, to the inventory in one fell swoop. So back through save load, I want to load a list of item, same thing inventory is, right? At the key of inventory. And that's going to load that in, pass it to add item, that's going to handle adding each item to your inventory. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because the inventory has to add the items in and that way so that it'll update the UI, fire off the appropriate events and all that fun stuff. I can't just set the collection to be equal to the new collection because it would just, in the back end, it would, it would work, but it wouldn't matter for the front end. So now if I were to try this out, we may have items in our inventory. We do. There we go. So that's pretty simple, pretty cool. But one thing you probably noticed, these items that we collected that are in our inventory now, they are still in the game world, which means I can collect it again. Now that's the big problem that I wanted to solve with this because it's not just a simple, how do I save an integer value? How do I save a float value? Now you need to move beyond that eventually to start thinking about clumps of data big groups of data. How do I save these groups of data? And that's what's important. So what we're going to do is walk through quickly here how this is working in total. So a unique ID is generated for the objects that want to be saved in the game world, at least their state. So if that potion is collected, then that unique ID is added to this collection. If that unique ID is found in that collection, then we do not enable that object when that scene is loaded. If it is not found in that collection, then we do. Very simple, so then all we have to do is save and load that single collection every time we load a scene. Very basic stuff. So then whenever I collect a world item, all I'm doing is adding that item that I ran into based on its unique ID to that collection for the hash set. Are you with me still? So what I wanna do then is save this hash set the same way we save the inventory. First of all, we'll load game events, save initiated, save. Same thing we're doing, right? Save load, save collected items, collected items is what I'll call it. Then the same thing. If the save exists under the key collected items, then I want to load that in. So collected items is equal to save load dot load hash set is what I'm using. And there we go. Just like that, this is hooked into the save system and also in a way hooked into the load system because that's how we're simply going to load everything. We could also have an event for loading, but I assumed all the loading would take place at the start of the levels anyway, so it didn't really matter. 
So we're just going to just do the saving just like this. So now that should be all we have to do to make this work, except on our world item, it may now add the item to the collection once it's been collected, but we're not checking against that collection to see if we want to spawn the item or not. And what I'm going to in fact do is I'm going to check to see if the item is in that collection, then I'm simply going to destroy this object. I'm just going to try to make sure I don't get too far before I do that. So what I want to do is say if, and I'll go through the collectible item hash. In fact, I want to rename that because that's when I was using a hash table for no reason. Now, I want to be using a hash set here. So what I want to call it is collectible item set. If we go through the collected items set in that and we see if it contains, as I mentioned before, this is what this does well. Does it contain something? Very, very fast to check if it contains something. Does it contain the unique ID of this item? And now what I want to do for this is we'll just cache this value. Unique ID, unique ID. Then I'll cache the component so we don't have to keep calling this because this is on this object. And I'll just say unique ID and also say it right here. Dot ID, actually it's the property on that component. Now, if it does contain it, destroy this game object return don't do anything after else after this so let's test this out let's grab these items here save come back out go back in we have the items in inventory and the items are gone from our world now that's great but if i wanted to keep testing this and have these items in the world i'd have to go in through my save file and delete these every time. So what I'm gonna do is hook up that reset button to delete all of the files using that method we created. So what I'm gonna do is go into game and I'm gonna create a public void delete all progress. And go through save load and do delete all save files. So now I have to hook this up to that button and we should be done and good to go. So take this button and I'm already hooked up here, but that's fine. Delete all progress is what you would check on the game object there. And let's try this out. Save still there. Click reset and is not empty. Okay. So I think I did not tag it or I didn't pass in the parameter for it to be recursive. So if I go into save load, I have delete here, but what I want to do is say delete true, which means if there's stuff in this folder, delete it as well. It's going to recursively go through and delete all the files within it. Try this, click reset. Now everything should be like, I did not do anything. Yep, there's the items, nothing in inventory. Great, so we have a save and load driven system now, which is great because that's important for <laughs> a game, I guess like this, where you collect, I don't know, things, and you've got a portal, and you got a thing up here to collect, then you click save, and I guess it works. Let's find out. Back out and back in, everything's gone. Great, reset it, and everything's back. So that's gonna be it for this lesson, guys. Now, I expected this to be, you know, a single lesson, 10, 15 minutes long. But it just turned out there was a lot more I wanted to cover. Also, don't forget to check out the project, link in the description below. And if you want to buy any of my premium courses that I have worked with Zenva to produce, you can find the links and the coupon code in the description below. There's a bunch of them and they are awesome. Now, all these courses I've created, they were contract work, so I do not own them anymore. But if you purchase using the links in the description below, I will get a nice cut of the sale. So if you're interested, Check out the coupon code, check out the links in the description, and start learning some stuff, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.